Hi, you guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing, and today I wanna to talk to you about some bad investing habits that you need to break. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're new to this idea of making money with your own money, there are some basic rules you should follow, and there are some bad habits you need to break. If you don't break these bad habits, these things are either are now costing you a lot of money or they're gonna cost you a lot of money in the long run. So if you find yourself saying, oh yeah, that's me, I've got some bad habits, to any of these examples, you should probably stop it right now. Doing any of these things will only slow your progress on the way to getting rich. First, quit trying to get rich overnight. Getting rich quick, very bad idea, and it's something we've all done. So don't feel bad about it, just quit. Don't think that you can invest in some business, you know, bubble gum machines or something, and pull out of it with a profit the next week, the next month, even the next year. Good investing is not a get rich quick scheme, okay? Warren Buffett says that if you aren't thinking about owning a business or a stock for 10 years, then don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. We don't want to be bouncing in and then expecting to be bouncing out. Really good investing, to make it just this point, is all about long term. Frequent investing, or frequent trading, let's call it, eats up profit when you consider, you know, you're going to go through the process of trying to figure out when to get in the market, when to get out of the market. You got to put your money someplace else. You got trading commissions. You got some taxes you got to pay. You got all these things going on that often just chew up the potential profit that you would have had if you just stayed put. Buffett says he's held some of his investments for decades. And well, he's a billionaire, so it might be worth giving his advice some thought. If there's a mistake that I make, that's the one I make the most is, okay, I got it. I made the money on it and then I'm getting out way too soon. I should have held some companies a lot longer than I've held them, and I've held some companies for years at a time. If they're great and they keep making you money, why would you sell them, okay? And the answer is, you're trying to get rich quick. Now I gotta tell you, for real, when Buffett first started, he would move out of a company once it went from being super on sale to back to a normal value. And that process allowed him to keep up the velocity of his money. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the idea or the habit of thinking you're gonna hit home runs every time you do something, all right? Now, the next bad habit that I see uh, is giving your money to somebody else to invest. And this is what the entire financial services industry, including Warren Buffett, suggests that you do. So this one, we better dig into this one a little bit. It's a simple fact. And this is really important. Nobody cares as much about your financial future as you do. Nobody. So think about this quote from Warren. Wall Street is the only place where people ride in a Rolls Royce to get advice from those who take the subway. In other words, you're not doing yourself any favors by letting most financial advisors who are willing to talk to you and take your money, you're not doing yourself any favor by letting them manage it. They're going to work on a subway, right? You want to put your money with somebody, put your money with somebody who's driving out on a Rolls Royce if, if, if you can get them to take it. The problem is you probably can't. The problem is the people who will take your money, not very good at it. People who are good at it, not willing to take your 100 grand. If you learn how to do your own research about businesses, companies, and stocks, and the best way to use your own money to make more money, you can manage your own funds. This is not rocket science what they're out there doing for you guys. You can also make your own decisions about whether the company or the business you want to invest in has the same values that you do. How important is that? To be putting your money into something you want to see in the future of the world. You want to give your money? Give to somebody that, you know, is going to do something in the world you'd like to see done. That would make sense to me. The problem with investment advisors is they just don't care about your money like you do. Well, they love to invest it because they get a percentage every year, whether they do well or not. Most financial advisors, by the way, they don't beat the stock market. They don't even try to beat the stock market. They don't even believe you can beat the stock market, but you have to pay them whether or not they beat it. 
Plus, paying a financial advisor eats into your returns on lots of levels. Sometimes you get a really bad one, they're churning just to get bigger and bigger commissions. Now, you gotta educate yourself, okay? You gotta do the research. You can't just follow tips from some friend if you're gonna do this on your own. You gotta take care of your money, your future, yourself, and that's gonna take some work. I grant you that, okay? Another bad habit, over-diversifying your money. This is really one of Warren Buffett's really big issues with the way most people invest. Charlie Munger says it's crazy. Just over-diversification. The only justification for doing over-diversification is you don't know how to invest. And that's the only time Warren Buffett says you should do it. If you don't know how to invest, buy the S&P 500. You're massively over-diversified. Yes, you won't beat the market, guaranteed. You are the market. So if the market goes down and sideways for 10 years, like it just did, right, from 2009 until about, or sorry, 2008 until about 2015, absolutely sideways. If it does that kind of stuff, then you get that return. That's the way it goes. So the Warren Buffets of the world are capable of buying companies they deeply understand because they've done the work and you can do the work too. They understand they've got a company with a competitive advantage. They understand it's got capable management. They understand the value so they know if it's on sale. I mean, why is Warren Buffett sitting on $110 billion right now? Because he's expecting the market to go on sale sometime soon. They are not widely diversifying their investments into different companies and industries across an entire S&P 500, and they're not sticking their money in there every two weeks out of their paycheck, no matter what the stock price is. Get a clue from the people who are doing it and making money that there's a way to do this that makes sense. And mass diversification isn't it. Those investors, those good ones, they put a lot of thought into where they put their money, and you should too. And I should too, yes. For each business you select to invest in, you should be doing the same due diligence as though you were gonna buy that entire business. Your uncle gave you the money, there it is, you got this huge fortune, and you're gonna go buy that business. How much work would you do to find a really good one that you don't have to worry about? You don't have to worry about the management, you don't have to worry about the competition, you know it's gonna be doing good for many, many, many years in the future, right? So ask these questions, write them down, here they are. Does the business have competent and honest management, right? Do you trust these people? After you consider whether this would be of value, you know, if you were the sole owner, is the price attractive? Are you buying it a good deal? Are you familiar enough with the industry to make judgments about its long-term business characteristics? We call that a moat, exactly. Are its long-term economic characteristics favorable? Does it have a moat that is intrinsic to that company? You can't separate it, it's locked in. Railroad tracks for railroad trains. All right, you can make this analysis easily enough, but only if you invest in the number of stocks you can manage. You can't make that kind of analysis on 20, 30, 50, I'll say 20, yeah, 50, no, okay? And you can't keep up with that. Buffett says you treat your investments as a lifetime punch card. Imagine you got a punch card and it's got 20 punches in it. Imagine that's all you can buy. When you're done punching that punch card 20 times, you can't buy another business. Your research would likely show you that most companies are not gonna meet all of your investment requirements. They get rejected, you don't punch the card. You only punch it over a lifetime of investing when you get the one that meets every requirement that you have, including it's massively on sale. You guys, if you did that and you got four of them right out of 20, Warren says you'd be very, very rich. As long as you get the other nine, or what is it, other 16? Bad math. You get the other 16 not wrong. So you get 20 investments, four of them really right, make you rich. As long as the other 16 are not wrong, that is they might not do great, but they don't get horrible results. All right, next bad investing habit you need to break is panic selling. This is really comes from wrong understanding of investing. The consequences of panic selling are almost always a huge economic disaster. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's say it's the uh, end of the year 2007. And the Dow's peaking at about 14,000, it's starting to go down. You watch this guy, Phil Town, on TV, on CNBC, a few months earlier say he's getting out of the market, the market's peaked, the, it's, everything's too expensive, um, and he's getting out, okay? 
Um, but most people are saying, oh, it's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. It's been on a long run. It's going to keep going up. If that sounds familiar. That's where we are right now. Okay. So here we are, 2007. That's about 11 years ago. We're in a situation where it's the end of the year, 2007. The stock's starting to go down. All right. And people sit there and they sit there and they sit there and they sit there and it goes down um, to 12,000. And then it goes down to 10,000. And now at about 10,000, people are starting to really freak out. It's starting to look like it's not going to turn around. It goes down to 8,000. People are scared to death. So what do they do? They start to panic out. They start, they've been listening to their advisors say, stay in, stay in, stay in, stay in. Long past when they should have gone out, where I, when I said to get out, long past that. Now it's down to 8,000. They're freaking out and they start to sell off. All right. This is almost inevitable. When the panic hits, it's near the bottom. When greed is insane and everybody's staying in and everybody knows it's going to go up, we're near the top. All right. And this is just what happens when you're an amateur investor and you're ruled by emotion. You're almost inevitably going to be panicking out of the investment at exactly the wrong time. And you're going to be jumping in at exactly the wrong time because you just don't know any better. So I just want you guys to realize that dealing with emotions is one of the critical things of becoming a great investor. You want to understand that you own wonderful businesses that if you just sat in them for 10 years and forgot about the stock market, you're still going to do really, really good. Really good. You're probably making 25, 30% a year if you bought great businesses in 2009 without doing anything to them. Just sitting there right now, right through the bumps in 2015, the bump in 2016, the bump just happened in 2018. So you, you could be sitting there right now, you still be making 25% a year. So what's the bottom line? Be patient. There's got to be something from some old TV show, right? Be patient, grasshopper. If the fluctuations in the market, these drops, are causing you to panic, you really shouldn't own stocks in the first place. Panic selling indicates you truly don't understand how the company you own works. And if you own the S&P 500, baby, you don't understand any of it. You're just hoping this thing goes up. Finally, last stock market tip we want to break. And this kind of goes along with trying to get rich overnight, okay? And that's impatience. Impatience. I think Warren Buffett said it better than anyone else. No matter how great the talent or effort, some things just take time. You cannot produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant, okay? It's a good, it's a good thing. It's like that old story about digging a ditch, right? You, you can only get so many people down there to dig at one time. You, you, just adding more doesn't just makes it more chaotic. So waiting for an event and buying a company on sale is one of the best ways to alleviate risk and make money in the stock market. But it takes patience. You've got to be able to wait. There are times when this wait can stretch into months. And there are times like we're in now where the waiting can take years. The trick here is to make sure you've done your homework in the meantime. And that's the beauty of waiting is you're not just sitting there twiddling your thumbs, right? Okay, yeah, you are twiddling some thumbs, you're watching some TV, you're going and playing golf, fine. But meanwhile, you're doing a little research, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit each week, and just kind of keeping learning, keeping learning, and putting up companies that you really like on a wish list. So you know when it's time to buy a company, you know how much it's worth, and when you get to that number, you know you're going to pull the trigger and get a good deal. That's all you got to do, you guys. Break these habits, and you're going to get rich. You're going to have a great life. It's not rocket science. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you have any bad investing habits that you need to break? Leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching. Now go play. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about investing habits, hit the like button for us and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. So thanks again for watching.